Psalms chapter 12 To the chief musician upon Shimelis, a psalm of David. And for the title, go to Psalms chapter 6. You can see that, in, that instrument that we studied. It's quite interesting. You see it in 6 and see it in 12, 6 chapters later. Yeah, let's just see it. In 6, what, what did it say? Go back to it. Um, chapter 6. Mm, the string instrument. No, that's not what Alright, let's go on. Help, Lord. So, when we're in trouble, we're to cry out, Help, Lord. What's the trouble? For the ungodly man ceases. As we come to the end of the church age, we know the Lord is nigh. We're not to turn to programs and events and the worldly stuff. We're to turn to the help to the Lord. As uh, uh, Elijah, I mean, he, when he he's up against uh, all the prophets of Baal, all of Jezebel, and he cries out to the Lord, he says, Lord, I'm the only one. I need help. Why do you need help? Because you got one person against vast of people. And we're in a day and age today that when you go run into a church, your enemies are there. And it's sad. You got to cry to the Lord for help. And this is a song, this is a hymn. To the chief musician saying, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases. For the faithful fail from among the children of men. Fail. They, they, they give up. They turn away. They don't do that which is right. They stop. Fail. Means they didn't pass the test. They flunked. Doesn't say they died. It says they failed. This to the day that we're in today, they failed. They don't want to fight no more. They don't want to stand up. They speak vanity. Who? The faithful. They speak vanity, everyone with his neighbor. Vanity means empty, nothing, worthless, no value. You know what Christians talk about today? Emptiness, no value, nothing. I got in trouble one time in church because all I want to speak about God. I should learn to, you know, sports and stuff like that so I can keep track of No, that's not the place for the ball game. David writes how many songs? David is part of how many chapters of the Bible? And tell me one time he brings up, you know, the, the bears versus the lions once when God gave him the victory. And it wasn't the New York Giants or the San Francisco Giants. It was the Philistine Giant and his brothers. Baseball, football, cooking, and all that is vanity. It has nothing to do with God. With flattering lips. You know, say things that make you happy. That's the preachers in the pulpit. That's when you go to work, you just talk to your co-workers like not, you had nothing to do. They couldn't tell you were a Christian just so you can get along and get the raises and, and be part of the world so no one will, will give you a hard time. And with a double heart do they speak. Now, what's a double heart? Someday you're dressed up and you look like a Christian. Monday through Saturday, you're, you're the world. Double heart is you, you got you got the Lord's heart and you got the world's heart. You're serving both God and Satan. Well, that's lukewarm. And God is sickened. 
And Paul writes, you can't serve God and you can't serve the devil's table. Jesus said you either love the one or love the other. It will come out. Listen, when you love the Lord and you, you don't want to go to church, you'll go to church. If you love the world and you and you don't want to go to church, you won't go to church. You'll go do something else. The flesh may say, oh, I'm not going to go. But the Spirit says, we're going. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips. Now that's not literal. He ain't going to come up and start cutting off people's lips and have them, you know, in a big pile of lips. That, that means he's going to stop. Cut off. Cut off in the Old Testament means you are no longer part of the group. You go back and look at the law and say, this man does this, he shall be cut off. You don't realize what, 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 what God is saying, what's happening. And cut off from Israel means you are not going to go to Abraham's bosom. Now, when Naaman the Syrian did what God told him to do, when Nebuchadnezzar did what God told him to do and got saved by the Old Testament, you got to ask yourself, did they go to Abraham's bosom? Gentiles, not of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But when you see this cut off written by a Jew, that's it. You know, no one is cut off today until they die and die without Christ you can't say to somebody you give a gospel track or you witness to and they give you the most ferocious hardest time ever you can never say they're cut off until they drop dead without Christ because any time in their life there's an opportunity for them to trust Jesus and then not be cut off not in, not in the Old Testament go back and study again cut off and see what some of those things were I mean, you, in order to get back in, you would have to completely humble yourself. And you would have to completely do everything possible that priest told you to do 100% of all the offerings made. And a lot of times that cut off is just, that's it. You're done. With little hope. I'm not going to say without hope, but little hope. So God is not pleased with flattering lips. God is not happy with preachers that get up there and make you feel good and tickle. Uh, Paul says, you know, those should hit themselves, t uh, teachers, get them tickly ears. God is not happy. I'll say something about something because those people are not there, not address them, but I said it. But they weren't here, so I'm going to say it. That's flattery. And the tongue that speaketh proud things. Never, ever, I will keep saying this, and I'll, I will keep showing you the scriptures. Pride has never anything to do with God. God has no pride. And never do you ever see or will you see God say, I'm proud of you. But yeah, I hear it out of the pulpits all the time. I'm proud of my son. I am proud of this. No, that's Satan. God says, well done. God hates pride. And he's going to cut off the tongue that speaketh proud things. Proud to be American. Uh, every other song and junk out there because we're Americans. Look who we are. Then you turn around and say, God bless America. No, you can't. Not in pride. If God bless America with the pride that she is and everything she's done and who she is and all that, God would have to pull Belshazzar out of heaven, out of hell, excuse me, and apologize to Belshazzar for all the years he's been in hell. And then let Belshazzar into heaven without the merit of doing what God told him to do. Because Belshazzar was all in pride. And never repented. 
And his kingdom was destroyed in one night. America, see, God's not destroying America in one night. That'd be too good. America's being destroyed day by day, and she doesn't even know it. She's too stupid. But the preachers get up and everything's okay, and you know, <clears throat> dude, we're going to get that revival. We're going to pray for that revival. Well, meanwhile, you got 99% of your church is world and, and pagan and stupid and making God sick. You might as well get a guy who has no arms. It's going to grow. It's going to grow. Who has said, with our tongue we shall pre... Excuse me. With our tongue we... I keep on getting a will and we backwards. With our tongue will we prevail. Who has said that? America. Nebuchadnezzar said that. Look at this great kingdom I am. There you are. You know, you're the human animal one more. And I'll tell you what about Nebuchadnezzar. He got right with the Lord. And made a public documentation of, of documented facts. And then you never heard of him again in the world. Our lips are our own. Who says that? America. Who is Lord over us? You can't even acknowledge the president that was put in the office by your voting. You cry baby every four years. If you don't vote, you can't say nothing. And then you have your vote, and the guy gets put in the office, and then you cry baby because he was voted in. I guess you're a sore loser. You didn't get your way. Suck your thumb and put a pair of uh, diapers on and go sit in Toys R Us and bang on the floor. Because you didn't get the toy you wanted. For the oppression of the poor. That's America. I can't afford it, so we'll make it a law. And then we'll tax it. For the sign of the needy. They're not getting what, they're, what they need. And for Israel, Old Testament, the Jew was supposed to take care of the poor people. I mean poor people. I don't mean people who are not doing nothing for a living because they don't want to do nothing. I'm talking about the, the family, the guy goes out and works and still can't make a living because the government taxed everything they taxed. Yes, that was going on in the Bible terms. Solomon taxed them like crazy. Mary and Joseph were so taxed, they, they had to go out into a barn to have their baby. This was a sign of taxation. And there's going to be more taxation on top of more taxation. Oh, I hate taxation. I hate taxation. I'm a Christian. I'm going to join the Tea Party. I'm a born again Christian. They say bring more because the more taxes come, the closer we get to the Antichrist, which means by that time I'm out of here. Praise God for taxes. Jesus said, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, render unto God which is God. And listen, if, if the government proposes a 100% tax and I'm a child of God, i got to rely on God to take care of me. He don't take care of me. God's a liar. But see, Christians don't want to think about it. They want to hold their money so they can put it in the collection plate on Sunday? No. So they can buy on more worms and buy on more paint for the car, buy on more junk and junk and junk and junk. You don't believe me? Go to Black Friday. See how many Christians are out there spending their money. Be faithful to Black Friday and skip church last night because it was Thanksgiving. Well, Brother Starley, we were out of town. Did you find a church where you were? Well, no, I had the whole family. Yeah, okay. Merry Christmas, too. That's coming up. Now will I arise, saith the Lord. Uh-oh. 
After all this speaking about America, speaking about the Christian, God says, I will arise. Amen. Come on, God, arise. Stop sitting at the right hand of God. Stand up and come and get us. Waiting for the glorious parent, our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, the blessed hope. Once Jesus Christ stands up again, that's it. We're gone. No, no, I got a big turkey dinner and all that ready to go. Got to watch the, the the pig skin. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. And I got the puff as a note here would ensnare him. I don't know what puffers would have to do with ensnaring, but safety. When God arises, he's going to put his church in safety. From who? The Antichrist. He's going to pull us out before that evil, the wicked one comes. As a time of Jacob's trouble. And even then, for the raiment of Israel, the very few that will be saved, God will put them in safety. Oh, that's interesting what we read about the other day about Puff the magic dragon from him that Puff is at him. There's that dragon of Israel. The raiment that will get saved, God will put them in safety. Those that say, no, I don't want the mark. No, I'm not going to worship that, that imagery. God wants something better for me. I have no idea what it is. I better run. God says to run. One day the, the Jews will obey what Jesus said. Jesus says when that when the desolation sits in the in, in the place where you ought not to sit, run. They're going to run. The words of the Lord are pure word. You wouldn't think that today. Well, as we read our Bible today, in the original Hebrew, in the Greek, and this word should be really translated, translated, and calculated, and pocketed, as I got the diploma, and all the papers hanging on my wall, to show you that God doesn't know what he's saying, but I do. I'm talking about people who say they're a King James Bible believing, and mess with the Bible. You know what pure means? You ever thought about the word pure? You ever think about something on this planet that is pure? They say a pure spring of water. Was there a fish in there that pooped? That's not pure. Did a deer go walking through it? That's not pure. The purest thing I could probably think of, maybe, I don't know, would be... If you were to dig, then once you dig down, it's not pure. If you were to go below the polar ice caps, I think you would find pureness there. Pure is anything that God, I mean, excuse me, take that back. Rewind. Pure is anything that man has not put his hands to. That's pure. Pure is not just clean, it's godly clean. Once man touches it, it's no more. But see, there's a problem when you run with that definition. You forget what the Bible says. In Genesis chapter 3, God said he put a curse on the earth. So there's absolutely nothing on this earth that's pure into the thousand year reign of millennia of Jesus Christ when he removes that cure. The words of the Lord are pure words, but man messes with it. He puts it through filtration. He puts it with, with uh, 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 fluoride in it. He does everything he does with, with water, and then he charges you for it. And puts a copyright on it. I can go with music about that, but I'm going to shut up. As silver tried in a furnace of earth. What do you do with silver? You heat it up, you boil it up, and you get it hot, hot, hot. To it, all the scum comes to the top. And you scrape off that scum. And there'll be more scum. 
I remember when I grew up with my dad, we'd make our own weights for fishing, and we'd take lead and we'd throw it into a can in a fire, and it would melt, and the scum, I mean, the, the scum just kept coming and coming and coming. I don't know if he ever would stop the scum from coming. But the Bible says that the, the pure words, the silver trying to fire, that's just burned. The Bible's been burned. Only one Bible has been burned through the ages to remove the scum. And it's not your modern Bible. After the words are pure, after the words have been tried in the fire, purified seven times. And here's the seven times. Just real basic. I am not getting like the scholar when I say these things. I'm talking about what the Bible was. The seven times are the original Hebrew, which is 99% of your Bible. Old Testament, excuse me. Number two is the original aromatic. That's the 1% of your Bible. That's where Daniel's written. Number three, the original Greek, which is your New Testament. By the way, you're not going to find the original. Number four, the Old Syriac. Number five, the Old Latin. As the Bible going through all these ages. Number six, the German, Martin Luther. And then you want to believe number seven, complete. Seven in the Bible is complete. There's no more after seven. The 1611 King James English Bible. That's to purify seven times. There is no ASV. There is no NIV. There is no Reams Doobie Bible. There is no, uh, I can't think of those two idiots' names. I don't want to think about the two idiot names because they didn't love God and they were Roman Catholic. No need to know their names. So that's how the Bibles come to you in chapter 12, verse 6. Isn't that interesting? 6, 6, 6, and you get the Word of God. Man, and the number of man is 6. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. So Jesus said, Thy word is forever settled in heaven. Thy, the, the heavens may disappear, the earth may dis disappear, but my word shall never disappear. Guess what you're going to find in heaven? You're going to find the Bible. Because the Bible says in verse 7, a new beginning, Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. And thou shalt preserve them. Can God preserve the Bible? Psalms 12, 7 says he can. From generation forever. You tell me the King James Bible is going to be in heaven. Maybe along with all the other six. Yes. Imagine a saved man who, who writes the NIV and the other junk out there walking by the Bible that will uh, be forever put up before all heaven. And then he look, turns over and the, you know, the angel comes up and says, Yep, King James. Moron. Imagine a man who writes uh, the, the modern Bible and gets on the committee for the modern Bible. And the Bible says we get a new name in heaven. Imagine God giving him the name Unpure. And he walks up to that Bible in heaven, and the angel comes up to you and says, How you doing? What's your name? Unpure. Why? Because I thought there was another one. I didn't think the King James was the Word of God. And seeing that angel gasping, You didn't think God's Word was God? Well, who do you think it was? I thought it was mine. You put man's touch to the modern Bibles, and it becomes unpure. You know a forest can be pure? You know a forest has no weeds. But have a man go put a shovel into the ground, and guess what? Come back a year later, or they'll come back two, two months later, or no, go back a month later, and you'll find weeds. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. You ought to know that, ought to get that. Thou shalt, thou shalt preserve them. What? The word. For this generation forever. We read Psalms chapter 12 because God preserved them. How can you know? Because God said it. 
Well, I don't. Then you don't believe God. You don't have faith in God. And you don't believe what God just said. Get out of my face. I'm getting out of your church. I ain't going to have nothing to do with you. Verily, verily me. No, you're wrong. You just call God a liar. Bye-bye. See you later. I'm not even going to talk to you. You're a fool. Bible says don't talk to a fool. That's why I left. If you hear this, you are a fool. Thank you. I didn't say it. God said it. One chapter and verse. Well, you're changing anyway. The wicked. Oh, wow. We jumped right to the wicked. And we closed the chapter. Wait, we just talked about praying to God in help. For the Christian failing, I mean, no, the, the saints are failing. They fall away. They got flattery lips. They got tongues that speak in proud things, pride. God is going to stand up. He talks about his word, and we get the wicked walk on every side. When the vilest men are exalted. That's a great first to close what great things we talk about then talking about God and his word and, and unfaithfulness of those people that are God but speaking more of God and, and, and the times that we are we're going to cry out and say Lord help thank you Lord for your word and the wicked walk on every side thank you Lord for remind me of that I already knew that I knew everywhere I turn around there's a wicked man I already knew that and when the vilest men are exalted. Who are the vilest men? Anyone that exalted? Oh, we got to lift up George Washington. We got to lift up Mark, Michael Luther King. We got to lift up this guy. We got to lift up our, our, our preacher. We got to lift up our Sunday school teachers. We got to lift up this group. We got to lift up this person. We've got to. No, it's not God. It's not God that you lifted up. It's a man. They lifted Jesus up on a tree to die for our sins. And that was a song. How many songs are sung in today's contrition, Christian contemporary music sung about the pure words of God? You know, the Bible says in John 1, 1, that Jesus Christ is the Word. And in 1 John, it says the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Jesus even said in his testimony that the Word is above the Father. And it says in, in Psalms, we'll come to later on, it says that God is, Magnify the word above his name. Listen, this verse talks about help. And the godly man sees this. Help, they, they, they fall away. It's only one help we got, and it's right here in our lap. What about during the dark ages when there was no Bible? It was closed up. It was right here in the heart. You know why the church is going to fail in the end? I, my thing is, before the Lord comes, the church is absolutely going to fail. I'll tell you why. If you don't like it, if it's in your church, I don't care. I'm going to speak the truth. Because you're not teaching children to memorize scripture. You're teaching them to memorize songs for, for Christmas child that is bail. You're teaching them all kinds of junk to earn rewards and candy and badges and junk and garbage and junk. There may be a day in America that they say, turn your Bibles in. If they do that, what are today's kids in churches going to know about the Bible if you don't put it in their heart today? Now you see why you get rid of it? You can't have it in the classrooms. That's okay. That's the world. You can't have it in the courtrooms. That's okay. That's the world. 
You can bring it to a jailhouse. That's okay. They take the pages and they roll it up and use it for cigarette paper. I've been told by a warden of a church, I mean, of, of a prison. The pages of the Bible make great rolling papers for joints and cigarettes. Florida uh, a warden told us that. And then you get you go to church and you get all kinds of junky word and stuff like that and. You know what the Bible says? It's one of the minor prophets. I hate to say minor. They're all great. Says there's going to be a famine one day, and it's not going to be of food, it's going to be of the word of God. It's already started in the churches. You are raising kids in your Sunday school today, Pastor. Listen to me. I love you and I love the church. I want to see Christians grow. You in your Sunday school class with your children, you are raising children who are not admiring the word. You've got in your classroom, you don't even know or you do know, a Sunday school teacher that are carrying a Bible is not a King James Bible. And you call yourself a King James church. And I know for a fact, as I've seen it, as a King James Bible-believing church, and when it came to the vacation Bible, all the kids got the new King James. As the Gideons hand out the new King James on the streets, and as I battle with a man, because there is no difference with a Bible, any Bible's good. Yeah, that's good. As you live your life and die and go off to heaven. What kind of heritage you live in, leave in if the Lord will tarry 20, 30, 40 years? You have yourself a dead church. You already got yourself a dead church. I, when I think about the Lord coming, I look at what could be, what's going to happen, what things are today. I just scramble. I want him to come right now. To prevent the mess that the churches are doing today. I have been in many churches, thrown out a few. I have not heard, but from two men on a cassette tape or CD, Psalms chapter 12, preached, taught, given as scripture. Help, Lord, for the godly man seeth, ceases. We are living Psalms chapter 12 today. I know personally because I am a worker of the scriptures. I am out there. I am a doer of the word. You know the Bible says, be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. As ye therefore receive Christ Jesus, so walk ye in him. Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Never mind those that walk from the side, those that do their own thing. Never mind them. To say, Lord, help. Lord will cut them off. Lord will take care of them. And then you have the word of God. And then for a reminder at the end of the verse, there will be always wicked men. This chapter raises a Christian that is doing what he's doing besides the fact that others are not. Oh, well, God will take care of them. You've got the word of God. Fight on. The Lord is going to stand up one day, going to take you. And don't worry, guess what? You also have all kinds of wicked people walking around too. 
Don't you just love the Bible? Glory to God. There's your help. Have a good day. There are going to be more people not going to do what they're going to do. There's going to be even more wicked people. Have a good day and just wait for me to stand up and call you. There's nothing in there about reinforcements coming. It says waiting for the Lord to stand up. And the poor and the needy are going to cry out. You know who's supposed to take care of people? Not government. Not welfare. The church. Well, our church just had a, a thanks kick. That's not what you're supposed to do. You're not to help the heathen. Oh, we have this so people will come and believe on Lord that, that garbage. You find me one place in the Bible that says you're just supposed to bring the wicked into the church. You know why the churches are the way they are today? Because you do everything you can to bring the wicked in the church. And then they get in the church and they overthrow the church. You know what the problem with in Acts chapter 6? The church wasn't taking care of, of their widows. You know what Titus talks about? It says the women are go out there and teach other women how to be women, how to be husbands, how to be wives and mothers. You got a complete failure in the church today. Women don't even know how to be women. And men don't know how to be men. But you can call B fifty seven. You can have all these, these concerts. You can have all these fellowship dinners. And you get all these Christians come down on Daytona Beach and have their, their, their whatever they have down here, their conventions and stuff like that, and then look at us when we're on the street preaching and passing out gospel to us. What are you doing? We're serving the Lord. You protesting? No, we're going all the world and preach the gospel. Why? The Bible says to do this. Well, I don't like your bumper stickers on a car. That's offensive. Christian saying that. Well, I don't think you on the street. I don't think that really does anything. Well, I'll tell you what, because the kind of person you are, we'll go on the other side of town and, and have our own sign ministry. Help, Lord! You know how many times I've cried that? Serving the Lord? I expect it from the wicked. I expect it from the virus man. But when I get an attitude from those who claim to be Christians, help, Lord! When I get Christians that call DCF on me, when I get Christians who, who tell my children to stop doing what we're doing, When I get Christians that tell me I'm raising my children wrong. As you sit there and do nothing. As I stand for the King James only. And I battle Christians out there because you're taking it too literal. Brother, you need to calm down. I'm not. You better believe I am holding the sword. I am dressed in the arm that God's given me. And I'm going to fight.
And if you don't like it, I'm talking to the Christians now. If you don't like it, I told my wife Tracy, I'm, I'm going to go on eBay. I'm going to find me one of those little ticket things you get at the deli. I'm going to strap it to me, put it in the back, and say, if you don't like it, just take a number and stand in line. There's a great vast of people, and there are all kinds of people that are standing behind me against me. Just pick a number. I'll tell you the God's honest truth for all those people. It's not something I've done. It's not because I'm an idiot. It's not because I've been unruly. It's not because I'm serving Satan. It's because I serve God and they'll tell you no. I just had a guy get a pastor get mad at me because I rebuked him about loving Christmas. And talking to him about the pagan holiday, and telling him he would he would never say that if he is a pastor. I don't care if it was listen. I wouldn't do it was a Christian. But this guy stands up to say he's a pastor of a church and says he loves Christmas. I'm going to rebuke you because people will look up to you because you have a title of a pastor. And if you say you love Christmas, you do not stay to show thyself approved unto God. You are not a workman. Because you would know that the holiday is all paganism. I am not the kind of person that will go down Christian throats and ram Christmas trees down their throat and all that. But if you profess to be a Christian and you open up your big fat mouth and make other Christians look bad, then I'm going to get the sword out and then you're going to get chopped by the word of God. Because I cry out, help, Lord, for the godly man seeth. And the Lord gives me the strength and gives me the word and says, Brother, go, ye in all the world. I believe the word says, the, the word of God is for rebuking. Exhorting. That's the call that God's given me. As we close. I'm not giving up. Because I love the Christians. I want my ministry is twofold. And I'm going to close with this. If you don't know about Jesus Christ, I'm not going to get you saved. I'm going to tell you about Jesus. I'm going to tell you how to get saved. That's up to you. The Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. It doesn't say get him saved. I don't put notches on my belt unless I eat too much. I'm going to tell the lost about Jesus. Number two, I'm going to train Christians to do right. I'm going to help them to grow. To get them out of, the, out of the breast milk and get them into baby food and get them to the right cereal and build them up as far as they want to go all the way to meat. Those are my two charges in my, in my calling. To tell the lost about Jesus and to help the brethren to grow. Now if you don't want to grow, you're a Christian. That's all I'm going to do. When you stop wanting to be fed, I'll stop feeding you. You don't want to get saved, you're lost. I told you. But if you want to be a Christian and do the stuff you're doing, listen, I've had Christians on Facebook come up, you know, smoking marijuana and stuff like that. I fought them because, you know what? It's wrong. And you're affecting other Christians. And I love you enough to, to rebuke you and tell you what the word is and tell you the fact is you're going to stand before Jesus one day at the judgment seat of Christ. If you're saved in the, in the first place. Well, that's something else. I'm in a battle. And I need your prayers. Because I'm in a day and age that discouragement for those who want to do right is all around. The wicked walk on every side. Discouragement all around. 
and it comes with inside the camp. And when you get that kind of life and when you read about poor Moses trying to walk with God and I got a clue. Help, Lord, for the godly man see it, ceases. You don't want to say see it. We're in a day and an age. Bear hold firm to the King James Bible and wait for the Lord to stand up. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. You know, I haven't sung that hymn four years. I've been in four churches. There's no standing up for Jesus. They all sat down. Sorry. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displays. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great. And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died.